with Alistair McKee. Hello from the Somerset Levels, where we're investigating whether the Environment Agency broke a promise to try and stop all this happening again. A year ago, this businessman was led to believe the dredging of rivers around him would take place as soon as possible. Where have the Environment Agency been in all this? Uh, in an office somewhere. You haven't seen them? Also tonight, a scheme to bring together warring neighbours. We've had many, many times when victims and offenders have shaken hands, even hugged, have not realised how their behaviour has affected other people. And the woman from Somerset trying to win back the World Darts Championship. I'd like to make it ten. That would be fantastic. I think there might be a few tears if I did that. I'm Alistair McKee. And this is Inside Out West. Here on the Somerset Levels, they're used to flooding. But after the exceptional floods of a year ago, described at the time as a one in 100 year event, people living and working here were promised real help. But 12 months on, here we are again. So what's happened? Rain and storm force winds caused widespread disruption in parts of the UK. We've got the new rain force, and we are concerned about the risk of flooding. Homes and businesses are flooded as rivers burst their banks. The floods are back. Thousands of acres of farmland, roads, and livelihoods are underwater again. A combination of heavy rain and high tides have devastated great swathes of the West Country. Somerset has been particularly badly hit. But we've been here before, so why has it happened again? And could all this have been prevented? Historically, the Somerset levels have always flooded. It's not surprising, seeing as most of the area is not much higher than sea level. But it's always been managed. Most farms have drainage systems like this, which the farmer's responsible for maintaining. And all that water goes into bigger channels that takes it into rivers like the Tone or the Parrot. But take a look at this. Something's clearly not working here. This field is normally full of hay. James Winslade's family have been farming this land for 150 years. This is the third flood they've experienced here in living memory. And all of these have happened since 2000. So which bits are your land? My land is out over there. Um, so most of the farm is flooded, but this is where the um, tone meets the parrot. That's the tone, and that's the parrot, and this is where they merge. It's like a motorway. When you've got lanes that goes down to one lane, you then get a pile-up, and this is where you've got all the traffic flowing out over either side, because it cannot get away. But your land, it ne the water needs to be gone within the next couple of weeks, otherwise it's no good to you. Yeah. You have to reseed and, and replant. And then we have that expense that we've had last year all over again, and there's no compensation, no insurance for it. How much did you lose last year? Over 100,000. Historically, the rivers have been dredged to maintain their capacity. The problem is, large stretches have been left to silt up by the Environment Agency, which has responsibility for their maintenance. You know, it's really Just over a year ago, Chris Smith, the chairman of the Environment Agency, made a commitment to James to change that, to start dredging again. What we need to do is uh, uh, find out here where the best places to dredge are going to be, and then we'll get on and do it. When? And, and that will be as soon as possible. When? Uh, the, the, I, I would certainly uh, be very disappointed if we weren't seeing some improvement happening in the course of the next six months. So 12 months on, how do you feel about things now? Well, nothing's changed. We're right back in the same situation, if not worse, than we were 12 months ago. Uh, Chris Smith, Lord Smith, said something would be would happen within six months here on top of this hill and it was live on board broadcast to bbc nothing has happened uh they did a so-called pilot dredge you know if they're going to do it they've got to do it properly in october this digger was brought in to do a pilot dredge of parts of the rivers tone and parrot 
to see if it improved their capacities. The problem is, no one's really seen it do much. I don't think that they really put enough effort into it. We've had the driest summer for years, no water in the river, ideal time to get on and do it. They started the end of October, beginning of November, just when the rain started, and then said they couldn't do it because the uh, water was too high. And yet the Environment Agency knows dredging the rivers will have a significant impact on flooding. We've seen their own calculations in a report by the local drainage board. They say dredging the parrot and tone would significantly reduce the duration and depth of flooding in the Curry, Hay, Salt and North Moors areas of the levels. So why haven't they dredged the rivers? Well, they say it's down to cost. Their estimates are between three and four million pounds to do the job. Money they say needs to come from the government. But the drainage board has put the cost to the region of last year's floods at nearly 10 million. We asked the Environment Agency for an interview and they agreed and were supposed to meet us here today. But at the last moment, they called the programme and unexpectedly pulled out. We're told this was an order that came from the top of the organisation. Finally, they provided a statement which says... Dredging was undertaken at five different locations on at least nine full working days. It was important that we complied with legal constraints and permissions before starting work. High river levels plus the bad weather meant we had to consider the safety of our workforce and given the conditions, it meant we had to stop. The people here are becoming increasingly angry and fed up. They feel abandoned and ignored by the Environment Agency. And local businessman Neil Craddock's not prepared to wait for them to act. I met him at Burrow Bridge and he took me along this stretch of the A361. Believe it or not, there's a road under here. Well, my goodness, we've just arrived here in a tractor. What have you had to do here to keep the business going, surrounded by all this water? Well, at the moment, you can hear we're cutting trees down to enable us to increase the height of the bank to keep the water at bay. Meanwhile, the pumps are going... 24 hours a day. Last year, we were completely wiped out. This year, we're intent on actually staying in business. That's why we're going to all of these lengths. Where have the Environment Agency been in all this? Uh, in an office somewhere. You haven't seen them? Have you any idea what they're able to do? I to had a text message from the Environment Agency last week to say that uh, anticipate floods in this area. Yeah. Although today, actually, they did help. They brought us some sandbags, yeah. You know, they, they used to dredge the rivers, and this problem wasn't here. And this is twice, you know, two consecutive years now. You, you can't continue like this. They've got to dredge the river. They've got to dredge that river. The Environment Agency has told us it hasn't got the money to dredge the rivers. So is it time for another organisation to step in? The Royal Bath and West Society has a plan. I met its former chairman, Edwin White, to find out more. So Edwin, your organisation has been involved in the, in, in the drainage of this area for, for quite some time. It has. Uh, over 200 years ago, uh, the society was organising the drainage and drawing up the schemes for the levels at that time. And what do you make of the situation at the moment? Frankly, it is shambles. Unfortunately, there is an impasse because uh, government are not coming forward with the money. Therefore, the society has come along as an honest broker uh, saying, shall we raise money with a fighting fund to actually dredge the rivers and sort this problem out? For years, the people living and working on the levels have been calling for the rivers to be dredged. The Environment Agency has admitted it would reduce flooding but can't afford to do it. But for all those living here who've lost millions, it would be a small price to pay if it helps to stop all this happening again. And you can join BBC Somerset on the levels tomorrow with a day of live programmes from the village of Muchelney. Coming up, 